Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson number three in our freedom unit. Today's essential question is, how did conflict between European nations lead to tension in the 13 colonies? Part one. It's a very long essential question, but it really does summarize what this lesson is about. And the events we're going to discuss today have a very large impact on the 13 colonies and actually set in motion the events that eventually lead to the American Revolution. So please write down the essential question and we will then start the lesson. We always start our lessons with a review of vocabulary and this will be no exception. These vocabulary words are already in your interactive notebook, but I'm gonna review the definitions because these terms will be used during this lesson. Our first word is ally. An ally is a nation that joins other nations in some common effort, such as winning a war. When you're fighting a war, it's good to have allies. A treaty is a formal agreement between two nations. Uh, in many cases, when a war is over, there is a treaty that ends the war and sets the conditions that will exist after the war is over. And then another term is militia. A militia is an army made up of ordinary citizens who are available to fight in an emergency. Um, you, militias are often uh, in small towns and serve as kind of a backup defense force um, for the army. Although sometimes the militia acts in place of an actual army. So hold on to that thought. Our first left side question today is what were the causes of the French Indian War? Uh, the French Indian War is interesting in that it's actually a part of a larger war known as the Seven Years War, which was fought in many different parts of the world. But the French Indian War is the part of the war that was fought in North America, and it was mainly a competition between Great Britain and France. Uh, remember, we use Great Britain and England kind of interchangeably. In England is part of Great Britain, uh, but Great Britain actually includes England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. So uh, keep that in mind. So as I kind of already alluded to, France and England were both competing over the land west of the Appalachian Mountains, and this land was called the Ohio River Valley. If you don't want to write that over and over again in your notes, just write it one time, and then from this point forward, you can abbreviate it as the ORV, the Ohio River Valley. Um, both France and Great Britain were competing for this land, uh, the 13 colonies were looking to move westward across the mountains, and France was looking to lay claim to that land um, because the French were fur trappers and they wanted to trap a lot of fur in that area. So France built a fort near the modern-day city of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, and that fort was called Fort Duquesne. Uh, is pronounced Duquesne. Um, if you know French, you'll understand that. If you don't know French, just trust me. It's pronounced Fort Duquesne. Uh, Native Americans were actually allies of the French. Uh, the French had a very different relationship with Native Americans than the English did. The French were very friendly towards the Native Americans. Uh, they did not come in and try and push them off their land. They were very respectful. In many cases, Native Americans actually invited the French to marry their women, um, and they had a very cooperative relationship, whereas the English tended to come in and shoot first and ask questions later. They also tended to come in and chop down all of the forests and shoo all the Native Americans off the land. So given those two alternatives, if you were a Native American, you probably would have sided with the French too. Uh, the governor of Virginia um, in the 13 colonies sent a militia, so a band of citizen volunteers, that was led by a very young man named George Washington, and his job was to go across the mountains and take out Fort Duquesne. 
So this was kind of the tip of the spear. The English are trying to move west. They want to push the French out of the way. And so you have a conflict between two major European powers taking place in North America. What's going to happen next? We'll find out on the next slide. Same left side question. We're just going to continue with the notes. Um, George Washington actually won the first skirmish of this conflict. Uh, he was actually a very able uh, military commander, and he was trying to prove to the British that even though he was born in the Americas and was a uh, mere colonist from their perspective, that he should rate and be considered um, eligible to be a British officer, which was quite a bit for him to expect. Uh, under General Braddock, that's this guy here in the circle, um, British forces were routed and forced back to Virginia. And uh, in the larger battle that General Braddock led, two out of every three um, colonial soldiers from the 13 colonies died. Uh, the British had an unfortunate tendency to wear very bright red uniforms. And when you're marching through the forest, your bright red uniforms kind of make you a target whereas the Native Americans and the French tended to wear buckskin, which was essentially like camouflage, and they just hid in the bushes and hid in the trees until the British marched by, and then they'd, they'd open fire. And um, so very different military tactics. Um, they weren't doing good things for the British at this point in the conflict. So these events that I'm discussing became the beginning of what we know as the French-Indian War. But it was the French and the Indians, I prefer the term Native Americans, or the indigenous people, against the British. So the British is just not part of the name of this war. But it is also known as the Seven Years' War that lasted nine years. You can ask me about that if you want. Um, the French and their native allies faced off against the British for control of the Ohio River Valley. And like I said, at first, the French actually did very well because their battle tactics made more sense given the terrain that they were fighting in, whereas the British tactics were, hey, let's wear bright red uniforms and march in rows, because that's what we do in Europe, and let's hope everything works out for a time. It didn't. But then, our next left side question is, what were the effects of the French-Indian War? Uh, I'm skipping ahead here, but uh, let's just go cut to the chase. Uh, eventually, the British did gain the upper hand after losing many of the early battles. Um, they did have the better trained army. And they actually inflicted a major defeat on the French in Quebec City, which is in Quebec, which is part of modern day Canada. So much further north, um, the British were much more successful. And they actually climbed up on the Plains of Abraham. So they literally marched up these cliffs. This is the St. Lawrence River, the St. Lawrence Seaway that flows through Canada. They marched up these cliffs and gained the upper ground and defeated the French in what is now the capital of the Canadian province of Quebec. There was a treaty that ended the war and basically it gave what is now Canada to Great Britain. So if you wonder how it is that Canada became a country, and if you wonder how it is that Canada has both an English and a French speaking population, you now have your answer because the French-speaking population of Canada is basically the descendants of the original French settlers that lived there and colonized the area. And then after the war was over, the British were smart enough to allow the French to keep their language and also allow them to keep their Catholic religion. Because obviously the British spoke English and they tended to be Protestant or be part of the Church of England. The French tended to be Catholic and obviously they enjoyed speaking the French language. So the British actually showed a lot of tolerance to the French citizens who lived in the area. 
hey, I just said all this. Britain allowed the French to keep their language and their Catholic faith, which is why today 30% of Canadians speak French. And if you ever cross into Canada, you will notice that all the signs of the Canadian federal government are in English and French. And there's actually an English speaking TV network in Canada. And there's also a French speaking TV network in Canada. So they are an officially bilingual country because a large percent of their population speaks French. Imagine that, kids. That's all I'm going to say. Moving on to the next slide. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is now time for you to write a summary of today's notes. Um, I'm going to play another crash course summary with John Green. Remember, that's like drinking from a fire hose, but it's also very informative. Um, I want you to write a summary of the, the reasons for the French Indian War, a couple of the events of the French Indian War, and the end result of the French Indian War, which is that the French were kicked out of North America, the British were given control of everything east of the Mississippi River, and the stage was set for Britain to become a true world power. I'd like your summary to be about five sentences, and uh, it should basically cover most of what I just told you without rewriting the entire thing. Uh, and I'm not gonna show the crash course video here as part of this YouTube video, I'm going to show it to you live in class. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off. Until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.